Hello everyone. A warm welcome to you all. It is complete pleasure for us at Propel Guru to have you all on board for an amazing webinar. It will be just few minutes before we get started. And now comes your webinar host. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for today's webinar. Our agenda for discussion today is the art of effective leadership and management. I am Ajay Dubedi, the CEO and founder of Propel Guru, the leader in modern sales and digital transition. And I'll be the host for today. Be sure to listen to the end of each conversation and to take a summary as well as closing message. On the speaker panel, we have Patrick Benson. So Patrick, yeah. Nice. To be here. So a quick, Thank a you. quick introduction to Patrick, uh, the founder and director of Leaders of Tomorrow Institute and a keynote speaker specialist in the social and workplace policy. He is currently the member of Coach Council and Canadian Psychology Association and the Entrepreneur Magazine Club. And uh, I think many more, which Patrick, it will be great if we hear from you. So, yeah, Patrick, over to you. Yes, thank you so much. Usually I don't really talk about myself, I talk about what I'm doing, but okay, let's see if I can do that. Uh, yeah, you pretty much resume everything. Yes, I was um, uh, some years ago. I get very. Uh, I was a clinical psychologist, but I, I switched to organizational psych organizational psychologist uh, because I realized that um, we spend one third of our life sleeping, one third of our life working, and one third pretty much uh, doing for thing for ourselves. So usually, when we're sleeping, there's nothing happening there in terms of psychology problem, and it's either in life clinical psychology or at work and I was only looking at one side not the other side so I was interested in what's happening in people's mind and how they get so stressed and what's happening and I was only looking on one side so I decided I wanted to become uh, the organ psychology to look at the other side so yes uh, that's why I become this it's been some years ago I've been a member of the AP American Psychology Association they have an award just for America and Canada called the uh, Psychology Healthy Workplace Award, and I was part of the committee for the Canadian side. Okay, great to know that. And uh, as uh, all my audience, uh, we all know that in this webinar, we'll be requesting Patrick's guidance to help us through all the aspects of leadership, including challenges to traditional leadership thinking and the importance of leadership development in the modern digital world and much more, especially probably from our angle so it's angle of uh, it and angle of uh, digital world okay so no further ado let's get started with this webinar and i'm sure uh, our audience would be having an amazing time watching and listening uh, to your invaluable insights patrick so patrick let me uh, le 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 let me allow you if you have something yes. to present as we discussed before this uh, we joined in. So, uh, share your powerful insights, best practices, leadership development, what you have, like straight okay. away. I will share my screen. I uh, still need to. Uh, all right. So, I prepare something special for you, and uh, it will go like this. Let me play this. Ah. There we go. So, sorry about that. So, yes, I'm a part of the Forbes uh, Conscious Council for the last two years now. So, uh, my company, I've got many companies, one is PB Consulting, um, that was what I was using in Canada for the APA and, uh, and the assessment we're doing in company and leadership management. Uh, I add the title Leadership and Management Development in the New Normal. It's very important because the world has just changed. And uh, we cannot, I think, no longer do management and leadership the way it was because the workplace uh, setup uh, has changed or is about to change. The first thing, there's five themes, and the first one will be talking about the millennials and Generation Z, uh, what I call the paradigm. Um, what needs to be understood is those new generation, uh, young people, they don't no longer they don't just want to work they want to work for a purpose uh, that would serve them best in their personal life a sort of blending between a personal development and a professional development together if they don't find in a company any sense of personal development they will not stay with you they will keep moving and butterflying like they've been doing i know people that have been quitting the job right now in the covid but it's very hard to find a job uh, they should have stayed. I mean, the, the, the common sense would say stay where it's safe right now and see where the world's going, but they didn't stay safe. They rather go where it's personal development offered more than a career. 
So that's something that the leadership management have to understand because they are uh, 30%, 40% of the workforce right now and soon will be 100%. So, of course, um, when it's intergenerational, sometimes yeah, um, there's a bit of a, a translation to do between this generation. What they do once they we move into the gig economy, what I call it. So the workplace would be like this picture you see here. That, that's a new workplace here. Uh, myself, I live in Thailand. I was living a year ago. Uh, so it's not far from this picture. <laughs> I'm not there. I'm in my home right now, but it's not far. Now, 89% of millennials prefer a person benefits of a pay rise. I give, you know, and you see on this little logo, like uh, they'd rather be traveling around and to go to the gig economy. The gig economy has been popular by the millennium, but it has been here for some time. First, they want a flexible workplace, and then they want an a la carte education to go with it. A bit like in the matrix, if you like, when you need a new skill, you just have to upload your brain or your knowledge with just what you need and not come back for five or six years of cursus and you know, uh, university. And they want to be, might as well be relocated in a nice place. If you can work from home, then why home should be home? Why shouldn't it be like in this picture? Actually, Microsoft, Google, and all these big companies, just recently, last week, Microsoft finally also joined the club and have allowed those millennia uh, or anybody else to work from home permanently. That means now anybody can work the Silicon Valley without moving to the Silicon Valley, which is given advantage to the company. And I think it's a good news. Now they can employ people with all skills and all range without bypassing the visa and the application and the relocation and living in San Francisco area, which is super expensive. Now those people, they're going to start packing soon, right? They're going to be about to go. I don't have to stay here. Why stay at home five miles away from your workplace if I can be at home anywhere? You know, and so they're going to start moving. It hasn't happened yet because a decision for this company just happened last week. So, I mean, for Microsoft, that's an example. So, yes, they, they want to relocate themselves and uh, they are happy with a, a pay cut as long as the perk is better. That's 89% will agree with that. So, that's what my slide showing here. A job that could be designed around a personal life and not the other way around. We used to, remember, we used to move to big cities because there was a big factory there and we have to adapt to the big city. And that created a lot of traffic jam, a lot of uh, insecurity, a lot of you know, people living on top of each other. I think this time is over, which is a good news, I think. Um, so yeah, there's no more home. Home is whatever you want to define. We saw it coming though. The pandemic just make it permanent. Um, so we want to avoid uh, that anymore. Uh, I've been, I, I move away from that, from Vancouver and many cities in the world know what I'm talking about. And uh, it's insane spending six hours in a car, three hours each way to just put eight or nine hours of work. Nine plus six, 15 hours of your day already gone. We only have 24 hours a day. I have to sleep, I have to take a shower, I have to do grocery shopping. I have no time for anything else. And many people, 90, 92% of the people in New York, when New York reopened, decide not to return to work. In America right now, in all America, it's about 55% that refuse to come back to the normal. You know, I used to say before you go back to normal, make sure you define what was normal about normal. What the new generation wants, they want more feedback. So we used to, for in terms of leadership management, we used to have like a one-year appraisal or maybe every six-month appraisal. The young generation doesn't want that. They want uh, almost a day-to-day -to, -day to make sure they're on the right track. They want a constant, just a text, just a, a, an emoji, you know, something that, hey, are you doing okay? Smile. That's it. That's enough. But every day, oh, not once a series six months. Uh, they demand, especially the generation Z, they demand this kind of feedback from the employer. And that's forced the leadership to actually rethink the way they were doing appraisal, rethink the way they were doing the feedback, and um, really be open and compassionate about uh, what's happening. Maybe they have a crisis, maybe today they don't feel like working. And, uh, but that's okay because it's a project phase. So the generation seek a collaborative, team-friendly environment and crave positive relationship at work. It's very important. And I have many examples I could tell 
uh, where on a negative environment, people just leave the job, even if it costs the company training. I remember this big company that put in three to five months training into the employee just to be able to apprehend the work, the task they were given. And on the first day, one quit because the cat of her best friend was missing and she was not ready to work at 800. She was ready to work maybe a bit later when she was texting. Now she gets stressed by the management and instead of showing compassion and saying, okay, well, just take your time. When you're ready, be okay. I know it's not the way we used to be uh, the same, but that's what it required. With a bit of compassion, she will not quit and your investment in her will have been kept. Now, she was pressed, she walked out on the first day, on the first minute, and then you sit on your investment uh, that you just put on somebody. So uh, how is it going to be today? It could be a video call because not only the, the, the pandemic, but also because we might not be in the same city. So video call is the future. Uh, I have to get used to it. Not that I, I personally prefer face-to-face -face contact, but what can we do? And so um, this has to be a really good part. Of course, new generation will be read they're already on screen all the time, so uh, there's not a problem for us. 60% of the Gen Z want multiple check-in from their manager weekly, if not daily. That's what I was saying. That's a, a survey that's just recently been made. Uh, this can become a major burden on management if they were not uh, supportive or, or ready to be supportive the way uh, they used to. So, um, and of course, flexibility in the task. I think we're going to the gig economy where people will pay by the task, not by day or by hours. So I got that much, how much do I have to do my work? Okay, two months, it will be done. Now, when is going to be done? Don't check on me every day. I will, you can ask me how I'm doing. I'm on the beach today. Oh, it's my cousin's birthday. But I, it will be done in two months. But when, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, According to a new uh, a recent report, also 80% of Gen Z saw a failure as something to embrace, which is a good news. They don't, uh, they think, okay, see, I, I put this uh, fail, stand for first attempt in learning. So they really want to learn from the mistakes they, they need. And I think what is needed is a collaborative, some country, like Scandinavian country, Scandinavian country have this thing. They can only employ uh, a young person if they employ or keep employed an elder person. So the eager, eagerness of the youth together with the ability, capacity and the maturity of the elder go together and they love from each other. The elder person feel still in and still uh, serve a purpose and happy to give everything he's learned before he retire. And the young person wants to learn everything there is to learn quicker from people that have been here on the job for 20 years. So that combination it's uh, already in place in the world in some country, but it's not many countries. I see this becoming uh, a, a more permanent solution, I hope. That's my hope. Uh, in 2020, Diluth uh, made a global millennium survey and about three quarters of the millennia and Gen Z uh, respond, say that the pandemic brought new issue to their attention and increased the sympathy for the need of, of other and the local community. Environmental challenge is still on the first priority for this generation and equality across the globe, including uh, gender equal e equality, it's very in, in, the, in the agenda. They will not stay by sympathy in a company that, put, for example, puts women down. They will quit, including the men, you know, uh, in this generation, by support, by showing support to their colleagues. So that's something that the management have to also embrace into the things. The same percentage say that uh, they plan to take real action to benefit their community. I think I see the, the Gen Z very much engaged. Uh, they, they remind me about the generation from the 60s and 70s, actually, where it was a big change in society at the time. And, uh, and then it, it went dormant for a little while. We were surfing on whatever we have and, you know, re too many problems. Some generation retract themselves from being involved. Now the new generation is really back in and they want to be involved with the local community. I know uh, some young generation that they don't want to visit the grandparents because they're too afraid of giving uh, the COVID. Uh, and they're very concerned about that, you know? And uh, so, and they're really helping, giving food, food bank in many countries and things. They also, t they're most likely to take one year off in their career. So be ready to see a resume that is no longer linear, 
but a resume that is like this, where for one or two years I decide to have a baby together and then so we, we, we just left for two years and leave. We learn surfing in Australia and then we come back and now we're ready to, for more, you know. And I don't want to be questioned all my uh, personal change. I don't want to answer your question of why I decide to make that choice. That's my personal choice. And yes, you're right. For two years, two long years, I lost contact or tracked with what's happening. But two years is not a lifetime. And maybe I, I want to, it's necessary to understand. So HR recruitment will also change. You know, uh, I you remember that you have to fill up in the gap. You know, uh, you didn't want to show any gap. Now people want to show the gap and explain why there's a gap in their in, in their life uh, curriculum. Environment, uh, still a first priority. Before the pandemic, Millennia and Generals and Z uh, protecting, uh, said protecting the environment was a top concern. And you know what? After the pandemic, he actually increased that concern. So they, and they will appreciate any company that is in tune with their belief. So any company that, does, you know, if you work in a company that do plastic and don't, you know, don't care about the plastic, they will not join this company, regardless of the pay. As I, as I said earlier, they don't really care about the pay anymore. They want a good pay, yes, but they, they, it's a gig economy. I want to work very good and hard for two or three months and then take six months off, you know, and that's the way they're going to work. And then I take the next gig when I'm ready. In a way, uh, you know, as a psychologist, I'm concerned about the burnout. You know, the, the, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, WHO, have classified burnout at uh, as the uh, 21st century um, uh, disease. Uh, that would be the disease of a century if we don't do something to, to stop it. A way to stop it is to do that, to work hard for a while and then to take some time off. Then not being stressed on a very expensive city and not being stressed and compressed into traffic jams. And queuing, because it's not only the car you compress, when you go to a restaurant, you queue. When you go to the supermarket, you queue. When you go to a cinema, you queue. You know, you queue all the time. And when they all go on holiday, they all go on holiday at the same time, they're queuing on the way to holiday, they're queuing at the camping site, they're queuing at the hotel, they're queuing where they are. They, they, this, they, there was a generation queuing no matter where they go, and, uh, and they, they don't want to live this way anymore. So, <clears throat> the second thing I want to talk about is the employee's best position. You know, many times you see met Jane. I don't know, I took a picture from the internet, but let's call her Jane. Jane, she's working in a doctor office. And as you can see at the bottom of my screen, uh, the doctor just left for the day and everything is open. Now she's supposed to clean and she will do the cleaning. But maybe Jane comes from another country where she's also a doctor or a nurse. And then suddenly by cleaning the paperwork, she will see, or an engineer, whatever it is, and She's going to see something. She, she's the only one going to every office every day. Not everyone has a meeting. You only meet with the people you meet because you have to work with. But not every department is involved. You don't meet every day. Some, some people you don't meet at all. Jane, though, go to every office. That's her job. And then she read the notes left open. And then she came with an ID because she has some background of it. And one day, Jane, the cleaner, will come and say, Hey, guys, uh, I think I got... I can see the concern of your company and let me introduce myself other than the, I have an idea for you. But we will only open to her idea if the management line is horizontal, not vertical. If we leave it still on the vertical thing that was introduced in the beginning of 1900 by terrorism, where there's people on top that are supposed to think and everybody else supposed to execute. If we leave on this thing, then Jane would not, would not have a say. However, on a on the horizontal management line, she would have a say because a good idea comes from anyone. You never know where it comes from, you know? And uh, that's what I want. So sometimes you employ someone to make the cleaning, but you don't know what in the long run the, 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 the best position she will get to. And they will surprise you. i give another example. When I was a student, I was, guide, I was a tour guide. And I realized that the people that were planning those tours never came to the country in that case, Norway, they were planning from Google map. And so when they saw from the airport to this hotel, it was 100 kilometers. So one hour, yes, one hour in America, but in Norway, 100 kilometers is four hours because there's no, first there's no highway and two is a fjord line and it's tunnel and there's two ferries. You have to wait for the ferry, board the ferry and wait for your turn. It's slow pace. So you say they arrived that day, they will have lunch at midday. No, wrong. They will have lunch 
four hours later. By the time, if you've been to Norway, we eat between two and four. So the restaurant closes at 4 p.m. and they don't serve food until the next day. So even if you arrive at four, <laughs> which is four hours later, you still don't eat because the kitchen is closed. Now, anyone that's been to Norway will know that. Anyone that plans on Google Map will not know that. And I used to try and choose. If they ask the bus driver, <clears throat> the bus driver in Norway most likely are the farmers. But those farmers will tell you straight away what is possible or not. But, but not listening to a bus driver because you're just supposed to drive the bus. Then you keep your thing. And I remember trying to solve many problems like that. <clears throat> the future of leadership <clears throat> is time to bring back humanity and creativity into the workplace. Um, let's face it, AI is coming. And it's not coming sometime before we die. It's coming within the next two or three years. I had a chance to meet the head of research for Amazon, the biggest company in the world with AI, the biggest budget also, in Seattle. And that lady told me two years ago that we have five years. So today we have three years, if a prediction was right. In three years from now, they did, let, let's face it, those companies didn't invest billions of dollars to showcase a cute little robot at the next expo. They don't want to do that. They really invest all this money to really apply. And the workplace will be the first, and daily life, the workplace will be the first place where we're going to see an interaction. AI is already here, but, uh, and I'm not saying an uh, intelligent robot will be there in three years, maybe not, but it will be some sort of AI where we have to deal with. Now, AI, it's according and it's uh, agreed that AI will replace <clears throat> one billion jobs within three years. Now, let's, let's make the math. We are seven billion on this planet at the moment. Seven billion. Four are in a workforce. Three are not, either they're too young or too old to work. So we only have four billion working people on this planet and one billion will be replaced. That's 25% unemployed. Forget pandemic. <laughs> what's happening in three years is there if they're right if they're right of course new job will be created that's true too but not to the extent of replacing those 25 percent and also if you serving food in a coffee feel secure you will not be replaced anytime soon however if you're a doctor or a lawyer you might be quicker than you think uh dr watson from ibm has been awarded from the uh, an international committee of doctors Actually, a medical license, not Dr. Watson is an AI. He can predict better than any doctor because he has all the knowledge of all doctors at the same time, right? It'd be le less mistakes in prediction and diagnosis. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> at the corporate level, there's a need. So this is my recommendation to bring more humanity. Um, number one, have a general compassion for all the human life. That's very important. Uh, if you don't understand human, if you don't understand, you know, it's not my problem. Actually, it is your problem. As a leader or manager, this is your problem. <laughs> this is your team. You're supposed to know them well. Two, have a general understanding of human psychology. Number two, uh, so have a general knowledge of uh, human psychology, uh, because when dealing with human, the minute you leave your shower, you're dealing with communication and people, and you have to know how it works. Three, have a fairly good knowledge of history because now we're dealing with a multiple background of people. And of course, not everyone reacts the same way to the same stress. You know, some people like to be stressed, some don't like. You know, uh, maybe you could ask uh, a Japanese to do something in a certain way, but you could not ask an Italian to do a certain way. Okay? Then be solution oriented in horizontal management model. So instead of saying what doesn't work, Let's try to see what we could do instead. Stop blaming people and start to compose with everybody instead of saying, okay, well, you're supposed to do that. You didn't do it in time. Everyone matters, as I say. And maybe a person just didn't make this job because that's where you're recruiting to, but maybe it's better. And it's up to the management to see, okay, you know what, you'd be better. It's like a football team. If, you, if a football team, you know, you, he wants really to play in the front line, but maybe he's a goalkeeper. He doesn't know himself. And one day you decide, you know what, why don't you try the goalkeeping? And, and they try, and it's actually good, better, and it, it's a win-win situation. Five, be ready to change your mind and perspective on everything that you thought was immutable. The world has changed, and it keeps changing. And if you want to keep the old, good-fashioned way, you're in for a surprise. 
It's time to accept the change is permanent now, which is a goal against what we've been trying to create for ourselves. A permanent good life where we have a good salary, a secure job, a secure house, a secure family. Unfortunately, we don't live in this security anymore. It's still possible to have that. How secure and how long it would be, that no one knows. And be creative. Now, creativity, I was talking about the burnout earlier. Creativity is the tool being equipped naturally to combat uh, the stress. The more creative you are, uh, you don't need a peel. You need to be creative. <clears throat> think outside the box and actually think outside the building because the box is gone and the building also. So it's time to think outside the building to find more solution. Most answers though come from real life. It's time to be observant and to observe not only the team, but also to find creative solution uh, to, to, to observe what nature have been doing, what other people have been doing. Let's try to see the slide. Yes. Uh, the next thing is diversity in the workplace, as I mentioned, is going to be even more diverse than before because those people will be all over the world and your team will be composed of different languages, which is a very good thing, you know, but we have to get along with all these people together, different timing, different, that, that's the first thing, the timeline, you know, and the one size fit all t-shirts, like brand, like, uh, McDonald's or thing that used to dress and be the same. I think that one size fit all t-shirt is done. It's long lived to the freestyle. The freestyle of coding, freestyle of dressing, freestyle of working, freestyle of my own rhythm. For example, how many times you've been recruited and you've been asked, what is your natural rhythm? Are you a morning person or an afternoon person? Me personally, I've never been a morning person. If you ask me to do something before 11, yes, of course, of course I get up but you don't get the best of me. I'm starting to be very effective starting 11 a.m. Before that, yeah, I'm awake, but no. So, <clears throat> but they never ask me, you know, they're trying to fit me into something. I think that's one thing I have to change. The future of organization development, and I'm going to that in a second. Uh, the saying goes, we don't change a winning team. That's true. And what about if we change the game? You see this picture here? They're trying to play <laughs> like baseball, but look at the ball and look at the, the bat. So the game looks the same. We recognize the baseball, but everything else has changed. And you cannot no longer play good with the tools or if that has changed. So you have to, so you don't change a winning team. That means if the game is the same. Now, if you change the game, the team has to change also. Would you apply the same? So what I was about to say, if all the rules have been changed and rewritten, would you apply the same strategy or trying to find a new one? Probably you would try to find a new, new one. So that's probably the, the future of the workplace. Everything has changed. And it's time to write the line as we go and be creative about it. What essential skill will humanity we still need tomorrow <clears throat> in the machine world? Uh, so we cannot compete with a machine. The machine will always be superior when it comes to physical strength working hours, coding, rapidity of execution, precision, processing and information, mathematic prediction, calculation, storage of information, and networking. All that is gone. At the minute the AI entered our world for good, we cannot no longer compete with anything that requires what I just said. So Jack Ma, for example, um, the, the creator of Alibaba, say he actually, um, I remember watching him like a, a, year, a year or two ago at the Davos um, Economic Forum. And he said like, tell the university to stop immediately whatever they do. We need to teach humans to become more human instead of trying to compete with the coding. Because, you know, uh, <clears throat> it was Google that actually tried the AI, they, they teach one AI, and then they, the task was to cable to other AI to see if they, to see how they're going to teach the other AI when one machine can teach the others. And as soon as they plug in and then they, 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 they perform the task, the, the machine could understand. They were using the latest Python 3, whatever the best advanced code there is today, whatever that the name is. The machine said, what are we talking about? What are we talking like that? They immediately changed the code. They used Python 3, which is the base they were given, and they, within seconds, change a better language machine to talk to each other. And the uh, engineer at Google, uh, they were watching it. It's like a matrix going so fast. Within seconds, they lost track of what the machine was talking about because they change and create a new language as it goes. And then they perform the task. 
They were so scared, they unplugged the machine. It was a big flop, you know, and uh, they, they lost control within a minute. The machine within a minute creates not only a new language, perform the task quicker, we lost control, you know. So, so competing with that, we will not. We have only one brain. When people say, I'm multitasking, no, you're not. What we do, we multi sequencing. We have the secretary with 20 phones ringing at the same time, and we pick up one phone at the time, please hang on. Please hang on. Thank you for ringing. Hang on. You know, and then we go back to the first conversation. And that's what we do. We're doing very fast because our brain is fast, but we're still multi-sequencing. Multitasking would be have two or three or five brains. We cannot do that. We don't have that. Any attempt to compete with this point will fail. And actually, uh, there's a theory by uh, some doctors that the epidemic burnout has been there that WHO was talking about, the mental illness in the workplace arising for all over the society is a consequence of us trying to compete with something we're not supposed to do, pushing our brain to do something we're not supposed to. So also in form of cancer, in, at some point some physicians uh, advance a theory that cancer is a, is a failed attempt at the cellular level to cope with a self-inflicted stress. So the, 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 the cellular can't take anymore, keep sending the message, can you stop stressing me please? And then they still know, but I need to keep going, need to keep going. Then at a cellular level, they're trying to change, they make a bad copy of themselves, that's what the cancer is, it's a bad copy and then the cancer spread, bad copy, and that's how they spread. So there's an explosion of cancer and uh, no one knows for sure if it's a theory, but I would like, for one, I. I would like to believe that there's a bit of that in this uh, exploding of cancer in the world. We've been stressing ourselves way too much and I've seen burnout on the rise as a clinical psychologist and other psychologists. So the future leadership will take care of everything. What's happening to the observe? My, my, my recommendation, and that's the end of my presentation. So my re recommendation for all leaders and managers listening to this webinar would be to really take care of all the points I've said. Learn to be yourself more aware of what is your need and then learn to learn from your from people you're working with if you want the best of your team you need to is your role as a manager to bring the best out of them if they you know the new generation they're not that patient and if they see that it's a waste of time they will leave within six months the turnover uh, could be quite high however if they really like you if you share the same music if you do something else then on the side then Honestly, they will, they will stay with you for a longer time. But keep in mind that we are on a personal branding for most people for quite some time. They only stay with you until they can reach a certain level and then their life carry on. And who cannot blame them, you know? So you will have other people coming in. So the employee for life that stay with you 25 years, this is gone. My grandpa stay 42 years in the same company. I don't, I don't even understand what it is. You know, me, I'm, I'm Malibu, I'm not a millennial, and, or just about, and I'm not Generation Z. And I never stay more than maybe a couple of years at some place, either because it didn't fit my need anymore, or because it was stressing me too much, or because I want to change. Personally, I want to change. Look, I'm in Thailand and no one pushed me to come here. It was actually hard to come here to get a visa and thing, but I decided it was my personal choice. And I take the choice and the consequence to go with it, the good and the bad. And uh, yes, and, and and Patrick, just to add on, like I have also been to Thailand, and like uh, at times, even I have a feeling, but probably <laughs> I'm a bit young <clears throat> to have that feeling right now. But I'm quite sure, like after five years down the line, with the with the workload and the pressure in which the new generation is, and especially the multitasking which we are trying to do, the goals and the targets which we are trying to achieve, it's it's so difficult that. I'm also going to probably follow your <laughs> uh, path steps and like I'll, I'll probably try to set it down at a place near the beach and like like I have some some relax like early retirement right yes. now, now everyone is planning for that right there is also one quick uh, like I wanted to get your view about a certain uh, like a, a quick input on yes. something like we we as at uh, Propel Guru and my like we, I have another CRM business. We are around 250 plus mm -hmm. team members, and with a multi layer of hierarchy and a company policies of growth model, both for the company and for its employees as well, like everyone. And majority of the time, what we have noticed that in most or like almost all the department, 
Uh, and let me give you a quick example of a sales department, like a person join in like a BDR, a business development representative. Okay. And with course of time, that person, he or she becomes a good salesperson, a smart, intelligent, achieving targets each month, quarterly and yearly, and like what, what like like growing up in the in, in that career. And soon the BDR gets a raise and become comes to a position of a sales manager. And the only thing which was judged. Uh, for that particular person to become a sales manager or even later down the years to become a VP of sales was the ROI. Okay, was like, was, and, and many times the, these companies like us face this difficulty. Like we don't try to find the leader rather than we end up finding the best output. Like results, results, results goals achieved. <clears throat> And 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 uh, like to to specifically point out from the background where I come from, like I I did many much part of my uh, career as a developer, and uh, as a developer I rose to become a technical lead and then to a, a, a kind of a delivery manager or as well as an architect. Okay, and obviously like I was able to see that although I had some good leadership qualities, but that was never getting acknowledged rather than my results and the targets which i was able to achieve that's why i was able to uh, go to that different positions and different places so i want your insights or like your thought on like what should the managers or people who are trying to identify like okay who is a better leader or a better person like who who is who is a better leader a, a leader who has the right leadership skills or the a leader is a leader who gets the goals or achieves the targets so mm. please go ahead, like your your view on it so first of all i want to say like uh, like in the cooking everyone can cook it doesn't mean everyone should cook okay so so same thing everyone can become a leader it doesn't mean everyone should first so let me take an example as you were talking an example came to my head let's take a musician you know, a musician, to become a musician, you need to have uh, some skills. You need to know how to play an instrument or to sing or, I mean, do something technical. If you, so this you have to learn, you have to perform, you have to practice years and years to become very skilled at what you do. And when you perform and even, even everyone recognizes that your music is fantastic and the way you sing or you play is amazing. This is only 50% of your job. As a musician, your other 50% is to be pleased by the public, to be loved by the public. That's also your task. If you only concentrate on but you play so well, but no one can be in the same room as this guy uh, or this girl, then, then, then it's only complete 50% of your task. The other 50% is to please the public. That's why you do music, to enchant the public with your thing. As a leader, I would like to think a little bit like this my musician here. Yes, you have to be skilled and show some results. That's only 50% of the task. You have to be loved by people you're working with. Instead of imposing that I'm the leader from now on and that's the way it is, like a military style, uh, you have to be almost recognized to be the leader, that no one can think of better off person to be the leader, you know, because you have maybe more experience, true, but also because you, you have what it takes to resolve conflict, you have what it takes to connect people. And connecting people, I have one good example of a leader, sadly, just one in my life career. <clears throat> it was in England. I was working for the BBC at the time. I was a, a sound engineer and I was working for the BBC in radio television. And there was one of my boss, amazing person. His name was Andy, I can't remember his first name. Uh, and um, he, um, he has 600 employees under him, underneath him. And he knew. I don't know how you remember, there was a, but he knew at every time, he, he knew how to catch up a conversation, even if you haven't talked to him for a couple of weeks, he would come back to you and say, so uh, how is the new house? Did you move? Yeah, did you like it? He remember everything you told him. And then he also remember every birthday, probably not it down, but it was important. And he came with a small gift that he paid for himself, a chocolate, a small thing, but because he has six hundred employees, but something small, but something to mark the day. And he was the first one, you know, Friday night in the pub in England, you know, they close early, right? So you have to, to leave early because they close at 11 p.m. So you have to be first in the pub because they get crowded. So he was the first one on Friday night to say, guys, it's time to go to the pub. It's my first round. But boss, we're not finished. I said, I will to, we're going to the pub right now. And your job will still be waiting on Monday. Don't worry. No one will touch your job until Monday. You have my promise. However, someone might touch your beer if you don't drink your beer right now. That, that man might come with me, you know. Now, this guy being so nice, being so, he was in a meeting 
with CEO and stakeholder. And then you have a problem concerning job. He was stepping out of a meeting immediately because, excuse me, gentlemen, some of my team needs me. I'll be right back. And showing the CEO and stakeholder that they are important, but not a, if you want to be the job and the results you expect from me, let me fix my team right now, even during my meeting. And he was the first one in a very polite manner to do that. Now, when this person, when Andy came to us sometimes saying, guys, we got a problem. We have to keep, we have to put another two or three hours extra Friday. No beer today. Can you do that for me? I never seen one saying no, Andy. How can you say no to this guy like this? You know, so a leader is you earn it. It's like trust. You cannot ask me to trust you today. You have to earn that trust. And same with me. And for that, we need to exchange, to communicate. So uh, the, um, you can keep, a ver I know that in some country, India especially, you have still a vertical, very vertical, rigid uh, thing. But it, it doesn't have to be uh, put down to the ground and become horizontal like in Google or something. Well, at least they, they believe they are. But, but they, they uh, it, it can keep a hierarchy. That's okay. But it's... Um, the result, as I say, think about musician. The result, if you want to sell records, CD, uh, if you want to sell MP4 and MP3, <laughs> whatever you want to sell, you need to be playing good and you need to be pleased the public. If you only do the playing good thing, just the result on the record, you won't sell. So, so as a manager, you need to, to, to be able to communicate well and to be liked by your people. And not everyone would like you because it's impossible. Absolutely. But... But, but, but uh, those who don't like you, at least minimize. I will say something is doing Buddhism. If you cannot help someone, at least don't hurt them. <laughs> you know? And they want you, as a new leader, to help them in the career. It's not only you're a nice, uh, nice person. They also want to make sure that with you, you have the tools to make me one day become a better person in my task, in my, and also for myself. I've learned from my leaders something in life. For example, in sales, you learn to, to listen and answer. And then you go home to your wife, you know, and you, you don't sell anything, but you apply some of the techniques, you know, you say, can I talk to you? You say, I don't have a time to tie it for today. But then you could do that. Or you could use a cell. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, yes. Please sit down and, and make the room for that. Because you would do that for, for your customer. You do that for, you, for your kids or for your wife. Why not? You know? Absolutely. And in fact, like, you know what, like this was one of my questions. I was planning to ask you like uh, a incident or a time period in your life when you felt like you could have been a, a better leader or, 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 or the part when you were like at top of like that, that leadership qualities when you, that turning point. Okay. So anything other than like which the sort of the incident you shared, anything other than that you want to share, where, which was sort of your turning point. Uh, when you realize like okay this is something you, which you should be working on i i was i was i always been pushing myself i'm still do i had a conversation just before this webinar and uh, she's my friend from, uh, she's chinese and the chinese push themselves already and they say you were in chinese you're pushing yourself too hard patrick and uh, she's right so when you <clears throat> it's become natural to me i'm not saying it's good by the way huh? Nothing is good, but that's the way I grew up. That's the way, no, it's me. I think it's me. So when I was working in a team and I was a team leader, I've naturally, because I'm demanding so much of myself, I didn't realize I was also demanding too much of my team. And they did it because they want to please me. They want to, I was the boss. So they, yes, they say yes to all. But uh, they start to criticize me. To, to, and I didn't realize I was asking too much because for me, it was so normal to ask so much. Uh, then one day, finally, I get the message. I get the message Then someone said, like, look, we cannot keep your pace. If you want to do that to yourself, be my guest. But I don't want to live this way. Uh, Let me be me, you know? And, and uh, I'm, tr I, I, I'm still, I, it's better now. And I realize that. But I still have to remind myself, even with my wife, and think, I have to remember, like, I'm asking sometimes too much of my kids. She's five years old. And I'm asking sometimes too much. And I have to say, Patrick, she's five. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can just, you know, you have to let people to develop the skills in time. You can expect to be, if you're quick, but good for you. 
you know, if you're a sharp mind and quick and you get it straight away, you don't have to take notes. Me, I don't take notes. I don't know, clinical psychologist, one of the few that don't take notes. You come back in one year, remember exactly what we talk about. I can catch up the conversation. For now, I still have this capacity. Uh, one day I will lose it. But for now, I, I, I still have it. So good for me. But it doesn't have to, I don't have to demand the same for other people. If they're more comfortable uh, taking notes and take more time, then do what it takes. As long as your job is made, you know, don't impose your view or your method. If it works for you, then it works for you. Uh, I will say what my grandpa used to say. The only control you have really is over your soup and how salty it is. So you're the master of your soup. Everything else, you don't master anything. So control yourself and try to be better, but and trying to comprehend that the others will develop. If you let room to everyone to develop in your team at their own pace, first, they would love that. And then trying to be in, your sh in their shoes and saying, okay, I can see you struggling with that. Do you want me to help with that or give some advice? Yes, no. If it's a yes, then welcome. And then you give what your view is. And if they don't follow what you said, then let them do. You know, it's just an advice. You invite you an advice, you give an advice, and maybe they try and say, nah, not for me. And then it should be. No, say, I told you not to do like that. You know, we come from that world. I think uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future because the pandemic has just accelerated this tendency. And I think there's no one else around the world to a better management, better leadership, and better workplace, uh, and even a better living situation, you know, in different places. Why, you, why wait for retirement to go to Thailand when you can take a plane when you can and come here straight away? Absolutely. If you can work, you know, why? Who, who told us? Who is this person that say you deserve Thailand, but in 40 years from now, not now? Why in, for, why in 40 years? Why should, I, why, should, why should I wait 40 years to go to the beach? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so lovely listening to you, Patrick, like especially with your examples and all. Like it's, it's amazing. And uh, you know what? Like uh, we have almost covered up good enough time for now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, to be very true, like uh, I, uh, I, I had an inclination that you have so much uh, like experience and information. I would call it information or learning experience yes. with us. It's really amazing talking to you, Patrick. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Likewise, thank you for joining, pleasure for joining us in this particular webinar. And we would stay connected. And uh, you know what? Like in our upcoming uh, months, like we have mm -hmm. another couple of good ideas and topics. So we'll be soon sharing with our audience and uh, with you as well, in which we can bring you back in. And I'm going to share you a little secret. I've never been to India, but this is my first plane as soon as they reopen the airspace. Absolutely, uh, we would love to have you over here. I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which, I, which city in which city you are so i was you know what like amazingly i was born and brought up in west bengal uh, it's uh, it's kharagpur it's a place nearby sea beach so yeah. i always like every time i close my eyes i'm there okay but, but the office which city you are now yeah but we are we are in new delhi so new delhi, delhi oh, okay. is the capital of india so it's yes. like all the rush and the, the 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 good slides which you showed like with all those car car jams and like <laughs> <laughs> i know oh yeah in india uh, yeah. Even now, even now with the pandemic, it's still. No, it's, it has uh, it, it has reduced considerably. Okay, but things are again getting back. See, it's it's like it's a huge country. It's a huge country. It, you have a large population. Yes, a large population. A lot of uh, solutions. A lot of problems. It's it's a mix. It's it's almost like. But you know, I'm amazed. I have something I have to say to you. Since the last uh, two, three months now, I've been doing a lot of seminars, especially with India. You know, I, I've connected with one and they all connect with other. I have never taken so much pleasure in uh, talking with uh, Indian people, actually. And I've seen the level, the technicity and the level of education is amazing. I'm amazed by Indian people. You are um, uh, definitely, and people know, like when China is going to, India is next, right? But when, when, the, the, when the Western world comes to China, they were not ready. They have to train them. Uh, the advantage uh, with India, they're already trained. The skill level of the people in India are so high already. And, and, the, and your culture also uh, being so wise. So if you can mix this wise culture and this level of technicity, you are the best uh, to, to, to go for the next future. And, and that's why I really want, I'm interested in India a lot since I know more and more. But I've never been there. So you can never know you know someone. You have to go there more than one time. It's a huge country, as you say, many cultures, many languages. I can't wait to do that. 
I'm I'm really grateful. Like you should definitely visit India. It's like it's our soft skills that I think is more valued outside throughout the world. The soft skills by me, what I mean is like yeah, the yeah. language, but how we can speak the same language. We have the same education system. Everything is almost like closely the same. And and yes, the people are young and they are more hungry and they are more sort of willing to fight and like like get ahead of yes. time or everything. So yeah, that's that's definitely there. Thank you so much. I will, till we meet again, as you say. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you so Take much. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.